Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to talk about Chapter 25, which is called, which is titled "The Digestive System." This is a quite long chapter, and I probably will break this up into Part 25A and 25B. Um, we'll do that somewhere in the middle of the chapter. First, again, with some definitions. The digestive system is the organ system that processes food, extracts nutrients from this food, and then eliminates the residue. Uh, it does this in five stages that I want you to understand. One is ingestion, that is the intake of the food. Two is digestion. This starts in the mouth with mechanical and chemical breakdown of the food and then goes on into the stomach. Absorption takes place primarily uh, in the small intestine. This is the absorption of nutrient molecules into the blood or lymph. And then there's part four is compaction. This is absorbing water and consolidating all the waste. And then finally, defecation. Digestion also, we should know, takes place two ways. First, there is mechanical digestion. This is strictly the physical breakdown of food that involves using the teeth, uh, cutting and grinding, and then the churning of the stomach and small intestine. Equally important is chemical digestion. This is a large number of chemical reactions that must take place uh, mostly in the small intestine that break down the food into its component molecules that can be used by the body. Next, let's look at the general anatomy. The digestive system has two uh, subdivisions. I want you to understand this. The first is the digestive tract with a T on the end, also called the alimentary canal. This is a muscular tube that extends from the mouth to the anus. And it is a quite long tube. Your author says that it extends in a in an adult about 16 feet long. In addition, there are accessory organs that are absolutely necessary. Teeth, the tongue, salivary glands, and then the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. These are covered in the last part of chapter 25. Now, something very interesting here is that the digestive tract Almost all of it follows a very basic structural plan uh, that is the same all the way through. It is in different layers. Starts with the mucosa on the inside, then the submucosa, the muscularis externa that has two different layers, and then the serosa on the outside. Um, now, these have different importance in different parts of the alimentary tract, uh, and I want you to understand that as you go along. I will let you read more about these different layers. Uh, the, the whole digestive system is shown on page 949. Figure 25.1, A the tissue layers are shown better in figure 25.2 on the following page, 950. The entire abdominal cavity is lined with a layer of connective tissue called the peritoneum. This is very important. Uh, if you uh, do any dissection or surgery, 
into the abdomen, you will find that you must first go through, well, after you go through the abdominal wall, then you must go through the peritoneum. Now, something, again, that's very interesting is that the digestive tract is regulated by several different mechanisms. These are neural, hormonal, and paracrine mechanisms. There is actually um, a nerve, part of the nervous system controls the muscles in this uh, alimentary tract. It does not come from the central nervous system. These are reflexes and other contractions that take place controlled by the, uh, by the alimentary tract itself. Okay, 25.2 uh, discusses anatomy from the mouth through the esophagus. I'm not going to talk about each section by itself. I want you to go through this on your own. The entire oral cavity is shown quite nicely on page 952, uh, figure 25.4. Uh, I want you to read about the tongue, um, the palate, the teeth. These are very important structures. Uh, on page 955, you will see the beginning of a discussion of mastication. This is a fancy word that means chewing. This is a mechanical action that breaks food down into smaller pieces that can be swallowed and uh, exposes more surface of the food to the digestive enzymes. Salivary glands are shown in figure 25.9 uh, of 956. The microscopic anatomy of these salivary glands is shown on the next page in figure 25.10. There are numerous different salivary glands. This, um, of course, all together these make a large amount of mucus or saliva. And this mixes with the food as we chew. And this likewise is absolutely essential to the digestion of the food. After swallowing that we'll talk about in just a bit, the food uh, goes into the esophagus this is a straight muscular tube that leads from the pharynx down to, through the diaphragm, into the stomach. Um, figure 25.11 shows the three phases that take, must take place in a very coordinated fashion in order for us to swallow the food all the way down into the stomach. Um, I also want you to know that there is a small uh, flap that will cover the trachea during this swallowing so that we do not take any food products into the trachea. I'm sure that each of you has, uh, quote, swallowed something wrong, unquote, at one time or another which uh, st instigates a dreadful coughing reflex uh, in order to, to get rid of that food out of the esophagus. The, the swallowing takes place in three phases, the oral phase, the pharyngeal phase, and then the esophageal phase, all controlled by the uh, swallowing center in the medulla oblongata, and it uh, requires very coordinated uh, use of the muscles that line 
the esophagus. 25.3, section 25.3 starts a discussion about the stomach. The stomach is shown in detail, uh, both a uh, photograph of the stomach taken from a cadaver, as well as a very pretty drawing. This is on section 25.12 on page 916. There you will see that um, the stomach is a J-shaped organ. The esophagus, you can see at the very top, comes down through the diaphragm. And then there is what's called the lower esophageal sphincter. It is a muscle that will constrict to keep the food products in the stomach and not allow them to be uh, to go in the wrong direction back up the esophagus. The stomach has three different layers of muscle, a longitudinal layer, circular layer, and an oblique layer. Uh, these all are very instrumental in uh, causing the churning motion in the stomach that will uh, help with the beginning of digestion and then the propulsion of the food through the pyloric sphincter into the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. The pyloric sphincter in addition to the lower esophageal sphincter keep all of the food inside of the stomach until an appropriate time uh, for the food to be expelled then into the small intestine. Figure 25.13 on page 962 <clears throat> shows you uh, a close-up of the gastric mucosa in three different set, well, four different sections, actually, A, B, C, D, that shows the different glands uh, in the lining of the stomach. And again, you will see the mucosa, submucosa, and muscularis layers. Uh, the mucosa here is very uh, important with all of the crypts and the glands that secrete gastric juices and acid. I want you to read about those as well. The gastric secretions also include a couple of enzymes called pepsin and gastric lipase. Figure 25.1 on page 964 uh, is, is an excellent summary showing all of the major secretions of these gastric glands. We must understand that the stomach is not just a pouch that holds food. It is extremely important in the beginning of digestion and absorption. Now, uh, the regulation of gastric function, uh, I need you then to go backwards a little bit and look at figures 2517 and 2518. And oops, I got caught in a lie. That's not going backwards, that's going forward to page 967. This likewise is a very complex um, system that is controlled by the uh, central nervous system. I want you to have a very basic uh, understanding of how all of this takes place. I'm going to stop right now with the first part of this digestive system. We will call this 25A, 
and then we'll go on into the next phase, 25B.